Hey guys, welcome back to YouTube channel. It's go Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Uh, thank you for subscribing. We really do appreciate. Keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you guys do. Of course, watching. Um, if there's anything you want me to react to, drop the name or the link down below. I'll be more than glad to react to it. So today I'm going to be reacting to Muhammad's first call shake. I mean, did that so without wasting time. Let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, it was the 27th of the month of Ramadan. That the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in a cave some three miles north of the city of Makkah in Ghar e Hira, subsequently to be known as Jabal al Nur, the mountain of light. He was in this cave, and on that night, the angel of God comes to him and commands him in his mother tongue, in Arabic, Iqra which means read, or proclaim, or recite. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, being unlearned, naturally, he responds, he says, Ma ana he said, I'm not learned. So the angel of God commands him a second time, Iqra, meaning again, read, or recite, or rehearse. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, again pleads with the angel in terror, he says, Ma ana he said, I'm not learned. For the third time, the angel of God embraces him hard and says, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. So read in the name of thy Lord and cherisher who created. Now the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he grasps that what was required for him to do was to repeat. Because this Arabic word, Iqra, means to read, to recite, to rehearse, to repeat. So he repeated. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. So read in the name of the Lord and Cherisher who created. So he who created man from a mere clot of congealed blood. So he says, So read and the Lord is most bountiful. And he says, So he who taught the use of the pen. So he says, So he taught man that which he knew not. And he says, these were the first five verses that were revealed to our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that Ghar Hira. Immediately the angel disappeared. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shivering all over, sweating, he runs home some three miles south to Makkah and to his dear wife Ummul Mu'mineen Khadijatul Kubra and he says, cover me up, cover me up. And she covered him up. When he got out of his excitement, he explained to her what he had seen and what he had heard. Because those words made indelible impression on his heart and mind. He could never let go. They were, so to say, like grooved into his mind. And he feared that what had happened was that something has gone wrong with him. We talk about other people, he said, who go mad, who are possessed, and perhaps something similar has happened to me. Our mother, Ummul Mu'mineen Khadija al Kubra, she assures him that Allah will not allow such a thing to happen to him. And she takes him to her cousin Waraka, who had learned the scripture of the Jews and the Christians, and she, he assured him that Allah has chosen him as a prophet. And if he were alive, this man was blind, Waraka, that if he were alive, you know, when trouble came, he would be very happy to help him in his mission. Now, question arises. Where did the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam get these words from? Where they're coming out of his own mind, his subjective mind, his own thoughts and imaginations? Now, I have had fortune, the, good, uh, the good fortune, the opportunity of speaking this subject to psychologists. And again and again, the psychologists, they say they can't account for this wahi. 
because the Holy Prophet Muhammad, he is not talk, talking about the problems of his people. They were problems. The problem of his people was that they were drunkards, they were adulterers, they were gamblers, there was fratricidal wars over little, little things, they were fighting and killing one another for decades. That given the master historian truly described the Arabs before Islam, the Arabs of Ayyamul Jahiliya, he said the human brute, meaning the animal in human form, the human brute, almost without sense, is poorly distinguished from the rest of the animal creation. The only thing human about them was the form. Otherwise, in their ethics, in their morality, in their behavior, they were worse than animals. The Arabs of Ayyamul Jahiliya. So this was his problem. And instead of talking about his problem, he is made to utter about speaking about reading, about writing, and about learning things unknown before. How do you account for it? Psychologists fail. Now this wahi, the first revelation, the experience that our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had, and that he went and ran home to his dear wife, Umul Mu'minin Khadijat al-Kubra, are not the narrations of an imposter. If a man impostures a position, if he, an imposter comes along and he says, I'm a prophet, God has chosen me, then he does not talk about how terrified he was, how he sweated, and how he ran home to his wife, which is the most shameful thing for an Arab to say today, that he ran home to his wife for help and support. And it would be more shameful 1400 years ago to tell his people that I ran home to my dear wife. Now, this is not the behavior of an imposter. Imposters don't behave like that. Because imposters, they would like to make it known that they are somebody great. That Jibreel, Jibreel came to me, an imposter would talk something like this. And I told him, you better bring God down from his throne. I want to talk to have a, to have a personal chat with him, face to face. As Moses spoke to him, I want to speak to him, bring him down. And God came down from his arsh and he sat with me and we had a heart to heart chat and so on and so on. This is how imposters talk. But this again is a fulfillment, is a fulfillment of a prophecy, of a basharat, from the previous scriptures, from the scriptures of the Jews and the Christians. In this book called the Bible, what the Christians and the Jews hold dear, the Old Testament portion of it, in it there is a book called the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 12, I'm sorry, chapter 29, verse 12. There is a prophecy which reads, it says in the book, book meaning the revelation of God, not literally in this form here, as we see the Holy Quran in this form, not in this form, but the book means the revelation of God, like Allah says, Zalik al -kitabu. this is the book, but there was no book in this form, it is the revelation, the wahi. It says, and the book is given to him that is not learned, I'm quoting. I am quoting word for word from the scripture. Say, and the book is given to him that is not learned. And Ummi saying, read. And he saith, I am not learned. In other words, I am not educated. How can I read when I am not learned? Now there is not another occasion in the life experience of any prophet in the Bible. And hundreds of prophets are mentioned in the Bible. Including Hazrat Isa alayhi salam in the New Testament is mentioned by name. Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam, they call him John the Baptist, is mentioned in the book. No Isa or Musa or Dawood or Suleiman or Yahya or Ilyas, not one prophet in this whole vast volume of the Bible, not one prophet we ever find these words escaping his lips that I am not learned. That I'm not learned. Jesus didn't say that I'm not learned. Yahya didn't say that I'm not learned. But this we find fulfilled in the life of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that he is a fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the words of Hazrat Musa salam, he prophesied the coming of our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the words of Hazrat Isa salam, Jesus Christ, he also prophesied the coming of our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is the duty of the Muslim to look up these verses and master these verses and share them with their fellow countrymen, the Christians who live in our midst, the Christians in the Lebanon, the Christians in Egypt, and the Christians throughout the world, people, our fellow workers, our co-workers, our employees, 
it is our duty to share this knowledge, this basharat, this fulfillment of prophecy with them, with the Jews and the Christians. And this is the primary duty of the Muslims and it is about time that we did this job which we have been neglecting for the past 1400 years. <laughs> Uh, very interesting. I'm sure if any of us um, were um, visited by angels and told to do what Muhammad was told, I think all of us would be freaked out at the end of the day. And not all of us, but maybe majority of us, I'd love to believe because others would just brush it aside, others would take it as it is and look into it, you know. Otherwise, most of us, I fear, would be terrified. I'll be like, what was that? Do I want to relive such a moment again? You know, there is that fear of not knowing what was going on, the fear of not knowing what to do in that moment. And it's only human, you know. If you ran down to tell the wife about it, that's fine. It's just him being human. I love the advice Ami Didat gives saying, these are the verses the verses uh you should share or no um to share them is important but also have conversations about them is another important p point because I, I would really really love to see a muslim a christian a jew having a very very beautiful conversation concerning this verse I don't know if it's in the Torah, but he just read something from the Bible. He related it to something in the Quran. If if there can be people like willing to have a um, a very respectful discussion concerning that, I'll be the first one to watch because I'm always curious. Like, how do you interpret this? How do you take this? What do you think about it? So what's the way forward, you know? And I really don't have much to say. I really, really enjoy Muhammad's stories. Uh, let me know what you guys think. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. I'm not sure if this one was suggested, but a big shout out if it was. If there's anything you want me to react to, let me know down below. And I'll be more than glad to react to it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.